All right, I am Andy McCabe. I've been doing water damage mitigation for about 15 years, 16 years. Over my years, I've learned a thing or two about how to make money and how to lose money. Uh, the point of this meeting is to give you guys the tools via this beautiful package here to allow you to make money, make more money for your company. I need to know who do you think makes the most money for this company? Anybody? Brian. <laughs> okay. Who's the guys in the field. Okay. There's, 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 there's no right or wrong answers. It's just the answer I'm looking for is the, you know, the one I want. And you're right. It's the guys in the fields. The guys that actually do stuff. The guys that actually paint and put nails in the wood and, and clean up the messes, those are the ones that make money. The rest of us are only here to support those guys that make the money. I can't make any money by estimating a job. I can't make any money by pushing paper across my desk. The money is made with boots on the ground. I'm going to illustrate that point right now. I need, uh, I need someone to run a stopwatch. One of you two, probably. Stopwatch, timer. Mine's on my phone. Now I can have my phone. Get, yeah, get it out. <laughs> so we've got a timer. I need two people to help me hang up plastic. We're going to mask that window. Travis? Two people? Two people? All right. I can take the tape. There you go. Wait. Wait. We've got to wait for a timer. And that's a 12 by 10, so get the long way. I just start at that window and come as far as you can this way. You ready? The window and the wall. Mask from the ceiling and just hang, drape it down. You ready? Ready? Go. So that's the bottom and everything? No, we're just the dust protection. That's a beautiful dust. Stop the time. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. You can sit down. All right, what we just did is cover and protect a window, maybe some cabinets, maybe some contents from, from getting dust on them. What you guys don't know is that in Xactimate, I can charge 27 cents per square foot for what you guys just did. So if that's a 12 by 10 piece of plastic, what's that 12 by 10 times 27? 27. 3,270. <laughs> 32 bucks. $32. How long did that take? 32. 47 seconds. 47 seconds. Let's say it took a minute. So it's $32 a minute times 60 is how much an hour? Nineteen hundred dollars an hour. You guys just made nineteen hundred dollars an hour. Can I get you guys back up here to hang up this piece of protection? I want to put it right here, if you would. Right here. Not enough, Travis. Not enough. I want this to stay up today as a reminder of what this is. This equals this. This equals more than your rental for a day of one of these. If you put up one piece of plastic, two pieces of plastic, three pieces of plastic, it's equal to one day's rental of one of these. So the things we do as part of our process are there for a reason. And yeah, they're there to protect the client. They're there to protect our butts from liability, from ruining stuff, but they're also there to make money. So this package here is designed very intentionally to do the things we need to do and not do the things we don't need to do and to make our work as efficient as possible so you guys can be making $1,200 an hour for your company while the rest of us just ride on your coattails and, and sip coffee. So I want to get 
right into this. I'm going to run a, run through this as fast as I can. I'll be running all the equipment. You guys are going to be filling it out. The goal here is everyone here to fill out a full package of this paperwork today. So we're going to run through a mock dry down of this room. And you guys are going to tell me what to do. I'll run your measurements. You guys are going to have to do all the writing. Okay? So let's start at the very top. Photos. You'll load it. You'll notice there's a little camera there by this this photo. I, there's a photo icon. There are five different spots on this piece of paper where we have to stop and take photos. There's intentionally five different spots because there's five different things we need to concentrate on, but they're not in the same place. So as we go down this sheet, you're going to realize we're going to be bouncing back and forth between pieces of paper. That's intentional. It's a process. So. First thing we do before we get out of anywhere is take photos. We get out of the truck, we take a photo of the house. We take a photo of the house because that's what the insurance company wants. They want a, a photo of their risk. Then we take a photo of the source. The source is where the water came from. So let's say I got out of my truck and I took a picture here. And then the homeowner brings me in here and says, yeah, I had a broken pipe right up in this corner. And it ran down here. That's the first thing I take a picture of. OK, there we go. Come on. You can do it. And then maybe I step back so I get some more context to this picture because a picture of a corner doesn't tell me anything, but the picture of this gives me the full view of the room. I'm not taking full pictures of the room yet because that's not where we're at. I put my camera down, fill out job information sheet. I'm the client. Everyone will write down on this piece of paper, Andy McCabe as a client. That phone number is 555. 888-1234. And there's a reason I want you guys, there's a reason for everything I'm doing today, and the reason I want you guys to fill this out is because we can't be afraid of paperwork. Everyone from the top to the bottom of this company needs to be able to fill out paperwork. You're gonna have, there's going to be times where this is not going to be filled out for you. Most of the time, Claudine will fill this out for you. It'll be, it'll be pre-done. All you're going to have to do is fill out a couple blanks. Insurance company, if you don't know, ask the client. Who's your insurance company? Are you going to turn in an insurance claim? It's very important. If they don't intend to turn in an insurance claim, that tells us where their head's at. And maybe, maybe we want to back off from this thing until they make a decision. If they're not able to pull the trigger on filing an insurance claim on something that we think is going to be significant damage, uh, maybe they're not a client for us. But is this a water damage, fire damage, mold damage, sewer damage? It's a water damage. Mark that down. Job site contact. This isn't my house. Claudine lives here. So Claudine is a contact name. Her phone number is 555-123-123. Get an email address. A lot of times we're not going to get that over the phone. We're not going to get that when we do the intake here at the office. So get an email address. So it's claudine at herhouse.com. And going forward, these should not be stapled. Why, though? Well, you'll see, okay. because we're going to be bouncing back and forth. We knew that. Yeah, go ahead and bust, bust those up, boys, ladies and gentlemen. So we've got the photos taken. Put your initials in the photo box. We've got the job information filled out. Put your initials in number two. Now we've got a work authorization. You guys are familiar with this work authorization. Who has not who has not helped a client fill this out? Nobody has filled it out correctly. Okay. Well, I'm not here to teach you how to do this. You're going to need to learn how to do this. Okay. Don't breeze through this. This is one of the most important things we do. Is CYA. If we don't get this filled out, we leave ourselves open to the <coughs> client coming back later on and saying, "Well, I didn't authorize you to do that." I didn't say you could do that. I'll give you an example of where that can go really bad. I did a hotel water damage here uh, in December. And the owner let us go four days of drying and, and demolition before she said, I'm not signing your contract. Mm -hmm. My client is still waiting to get paid $55,000 for the trailer-mounted desiccant and 200 air movers that he had out there and four days worth of labor and material and, and everything else to do a demolition of a, of a big hotel. 
she refused to sign the contract. The insurance company has no way to protect us because we don't have an authorization for them to pay us directly, and we're stuck holding the bag because an owner refused to sign a contract. Very important. This is the most important piece of paper in this whole thing. Everything else you can mess up, you got to get a signed contract. All right, next step. You got your contract signed, fill up, put the initial there. Who got that contract signed? You guys did. You did. So that's your where your initials go. Look over here. It says, first tip, take the time to tell the client what is going to happen. This form is designed in such a way to break up your workflow, to make it so that, <clears throat> so that you are conscious of, of what the next step is and, and how you're not going to get ahead of yourself. At this point, you look at the situation. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paint a picture for you. Broken pipe here-ish, ran down, and near as we can tell right now, the water is about out here in the carpet, and this wall is wet um, in kind of a triangle. So, but that's just from visual. You haven't that's done just I haven't done any metering yet. I'm just painting the picture yeah. for you. You just walked in and saw this. So how would you explain to this to Claudine, the owner of this house? How would you explain to her what you're going to do next? What what is she's she's going? What what's going to happen? What's happening? What do you say? Anybody? Military house part. <laughs> okay. We're going to find it. So if you find the, the source of the leak, mm -hmm. get, that, get that repaired and then uh, mitigate all the wet, try to dry it out. Mm -hmm. What else? Anything? I like to talk to the owners, make sure they're okay first. That's who we're there to take care of. So. Now you're talking. Now you're talking. Yeah, there is. It's an, it is important to tell them what's going to happen. It's more important to say, hey, we're here. We're here to help. We're going to take care of the situation. Here's how we're going to do it. We're probably going to open up this wall. I'm going to use my meter and find out where the water is, and we're going to get you dry. We're going to make sure you're okay. That's the point. Okay, now we're in mitigation. Number four, risk assessment. What hazards exist? And fill out your daily report. So tell me what hazards potentially exist in this room. Just look around when you came in. Electrical. Electrical. Trip hazards. If there are any. Okay. I see a pile of wood over here. I don't know what that is. So maybe I need to keep that, keep that in mind. If you go over to the initial box, you'll see daily report DR. So that means you've got to go find a sheet that says DR on it, daily report. Put the date, put your name, put the date, put the job number, and what you saw when you came in. Now, this, we're not writing a book. We're just making it so someone who doesn't go to this job site can understand what this job site was like. Arrived, homeowner was hysterical, pulling her hair out, water in the corner, some hazardous stuff over here looks like wood. That's it. One thing to keep in mind, how many times do you respond as just one person responding to a mitigation? Initially? Sometimes. 90%. Okay. What if you had somebody else there? Two eyes. Two eyes, yeah. One talking, one taking notes. Mm hmm. <laughs> well, yeah. You don't look no, 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 no. Sorry, Pat. It was something else. And you can look down the list and find something else for somebody to do instead of, instead of them sitting there watching you write on a piece of paper. You can always do that. Don't skip two steps ahead. Skip to the next step and see if you can get somebody else moving because that's what customers like to see is movement. That's why most of us, our first instinct is to grab gear out of the truck and roll it in. But you'll notice placing equipment is number 17. Yeah. So that's uh, it's a way down the list, but we want to do something. So find something for your other guy to do, not instead of just having him sit there. But make sure it's according to the list. L let's say we have this open up and it's a supply line that we can see is broken. Okay, maybe the ceiling dropped a little bit so we can see it's a supply line. What category of water is this? One. 
to be aware of. Yeah, it's clear water. Category one water. So you've got your daily report, initial your daily report. Now we're on to our room notes. Find your room notes. This is different than what you're used to used to using. Once again, this is distilled down to the essentials. The simple essentials. <coughs> what you guys have is a lot. It's it's one sheet per room, I think, right? It's one of these sheets per room for, with all this stuff on it. Well, you'll notice there's three sheets. There are three rooms on this sheet. And ideally, we're going to have it in back-to-back, uh, -back, two-sided. So you're going to have six, six rooms per sheet. We need, first thing we need is the room name and the dimensions. So what I like to do is take the affected room and any connected rooms I like to measure. So what are you going to call this room? Conference, conference room. All right. Conference room is, oh, whose tape is this? It's not a Fat Max, Pat. Somebody pushes paper for a living. All right, that was a joke. It's a little early this morning. Let's go 14.6. I always round to the half foot. Why do I round to the half foot? It's just quick, and it doesn't matter. 18.6. In the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter if that was 18.6 or 18.4. What matters is if I get this done quickly and and uh, as accurately as possible as an aggregate. Seven foot eight. So seven eight would be seven six. Okay. You see where you got there? That's not going to short. Not a significant matter, no. And you can do the math later, the length time, width time, height to get cubic footage. We'd, we're going to need that later on. You can do that right now if you want, or when we do the DHU calculations. I usually wait till I do the DHU calculations. All right. So what you got a conference room? What room we're gonna measure? What are you gonna call this room? Twenty-five by the same width. See what I did there? I looked at the room. I don't need to measure that again. It's the same width. Throw it down. So what is that? The other thing I'm doing is I'm looking around. It's kind of a mixed ceiling. Here's some, another thing to keep in mind. We're not doing a rebuild estimate off of this. <coughs> We're not taking these numbers and trying to do the rebuild estimate off of this. You're going to have an estimator come back behind if there's going to be a recon. I'm going to guess. That's a 17-foot ceiling. Done. I'm also looking around. How many openings do I have? How many hazards? I may, may not have seen when I walked in. What's the condition of the space? If there's a big gouge in a baseboard over there, what am I going to do? I'm going to take a picture of that sucker. Because you know what? I didn't do that. Whatever. I'll take a picture. Pretending here. We're, this is the magic of Hollywood here. Take a picture. Document the status of the job before you start. And it's going to cover your butt later on. Uh, let's get this office. I'll get Brian's office. Label Brian's office. 14 by the same length. Same height. Guess what? We don't need that tape measure anymore today. Yeah. Honestly. <laughs> All right. So we got our room measurements. We got our dimensions. Determine the extent of water intrusion. Think about how much equipment is anticipated and what materials are affected. That's what we just did. In your mind, as you're doing these measurements, you're going through these rooms. Man, I got that room is affected. It's got a little bit of wet carpet. The dry, the the wall isn't wet, but the but the carpet is. I might, I'm going to need some equipment in there. Oh shoot, there's a warehouse over there. Hmm, I got to make sure if it if it's wet, we're going to need a lot more equipment because it's a big space. As you're thinking about that, but you got their dimensions down. So initially, your room notes. Room photos. Who's going to take photos for me? How many photos should a one room have? And this is something you can do if you're by yourself. You can measure and take photos at the same time. But four? How many? Who says? Who says more or less than four? It says right here five. Mm -hmm. Well, at least four. I want one from each corner. You want at least five. I would say five. All right. Come here, Victor. 
Stand in the corner. One picture, two picture, three picture. Yeah. All right. Come to this corner. One picture, two picture, three picture. And did any of those pictures get a good picture of the floor or the base? Um, not really. Okay. Give me a good picture of the wherever best picture of the floor or the base. Now, would you also take photos of the documented trip hazards? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. While you're here, might as well take that. So what's the wise five? A magic number that you've got on your tip, five photos. Because most people take less. Okay. And if you're going to take five, you're going to take six. You're going to take seven. Yeah. If you take, how many did we just take? Six, six ten, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, ten. Ten pictures per room gives me as an estimator, as a project manager, a real good picture of this room. Now that's ten, twenty, thirty, forty pictures. We're using digital here, folks. It doesn't cost us anything. What it does cost us if you don't take a picture is missing something important. <coughs> so better to take a picture. Thanks, Victor. Yeah. Better to take a picture than when in doubt, take another picture. It's just it's free stuff. Okay. So room photos, done. Now what are we doing? Someone read the number seven. Stop leak, extract, protect, and content manipulation. Okay. I'm gonna stop the leak. Well, shoot, I can't do that. I'm not a plumber. I'm going to go call the plumber. I'm going to call the plumber. I'm going to go find the, the water main. I'm going to turn off the water main. Stop this. I'm going to extract. Okay, we get paid by the square foot on mitigations. On insurance work, we get paid by the square foot. We get paid more if we use what's called a weighted extractor versus a just a regular want. We get It's a difference between 75 cents a square foot and 25 cents a square foot. How many square feet in this room? It's over 200. There's $250 on this floor waiting to get sucked up. There's, we already know there's $32 hanging on this wall. We're going to protect now. Okay, let's say we're going to do some demo. It's going to get dusty in here. We're going to protect this floor. That's 200 times 27. We're going to protect these windows from this dust. That's, that's 32 bucks and 32 bucks and 32 bucks. We just before we even planted a piece of equipment or did any real demolition, we've made over $300 in this room. We need to pick that money up. Okay. We've done the content menu. We got this table out of here. We got these chairs out of here. Man, this is or we moved them over here and we covered them because we know our work area is going to be in here. Yep. All right, we got that done. Atmospheric readings. This is where the wheels usually fall off the bus. Guys get that glazed look in their eyes and go, ah, oh, I don't know what to do. Go to RDC. This is a page that will save your butt. And this is also a page that most people never, ever use. What we need is three readings for atmospheric readings. We need the outside air. We need an un unaffected area. And we need the affected area. We only need one affected area. I've put three on there. Sometimes people want to go overboard. I've never been asked for more than one affected area by an insurance company or an adjuster. But every form out there in the world is going to have three or more. And it's, it's just added work you don't need to do. You definitely need one reading. These things don't react real quick. So you got to turn it on and leave it. I want the most, I want the wettest reading I can. So where am I going to put this? Next to the area the floor if it's wet. I'm going to put it on the floor. Right That's right, John. I'm going to put it on the floor and wait right, right there and, and come back to it. So put a date and a time. Outside air is, you can always look that up if you don't get it. Unaffected, we'll get in a second. Affected. Let's say this had enough time. We got uh, 75.3 degrees at 57.9% uh, RH. Who knows what GPP stands for? Grains per. That's right. 
Grains per pound. What does that mean? The amount of moisture in the air. How many grains of moisture are in the air? Do you need to know that to fill out this paperwork? No. You don't care. I, we figure that when we get back to the office. We do a mathematical equation, we get a GPP. Where it's important is it's important that we graph GPP over time and it's going down. If, you're not, if your grains per pound, if humidity in the air is not going down, we're not drying properly. Okay? Uh, DHE reading, we don't get yet. All right, so let me give, let's fast forward. I'm going to say, all right, I dropped this in here. Let a few minutes in. It's 74 at 40% RH. And outside is, oh, well, maybe 56 today at 40% um, RH. Okay, we got our RDC done. Initial that. Start our moisture map. What page is that? FP. Someone's reading. Someone's awake. You said you weren't awake this morning. Maybe by now. It's another space where people have a tendency to get hung up. They feel like they have to be Picasso. We don't need to be Picasso here. We've got room measurements already. All I need is room shapes. I don't even need measurements on this. A lot of guys go hog wild and they give you door swings and and all you know it's like an architect wrote it. We don't need an architect here. We just need room shapes. So feel free to stand up, look around, but I want you to draw this room, that room and Brian's office on your piece of paper. As you see it. I want you to show me where the doors are and windows. Guys usually go one of two ways. Either start too small and use too little space or start too big and run out of space. Guess what? There's going to be... I don't want tables. Guess what? There's going to be a blank two or three of these sheets in your packet. You mess up the first one, guess what? It's done. Just start over. Oh, man. Basketball player here. In a past life. How are we doing? Beautiful. Simple. Wonderful. I can't read your writing. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about shape, yeah. So right? See, you started small. Yeah. Feel free to go big. Right, there so you go. Simple. Easy. Great. Good. <laughs> I can take my measurements. I can take the 10 photos we took, and I can take this, and I have a real good idea of what's in this room. But that's fine. The good thing is you can read your right. Oh. Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> so start a moisture map. What is wet? Let me go, uh, let me tell you what's wet. What's the, what's the favorite moisture meter in the, in the room? Some people like uh, Lingo Mat, some people like... Uh, Delmhurst, what do you guys use? <laughs> All right, so dry, 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 dry. Beep. Wet, 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 dry. Okay. Hmm. This is 100% saturated. Let's keep going down. Wet, 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 dry. Hmm. Okay, so it's getting smaller. Dry, 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 wet. All right. Baseboard is wet to here and here. Drywall is wet. What I just said. Go back to your moisture map. Put a little circle where the source is. A little circle. All right. If you'll look to the bottom left, there's a little circle for floor readings. There's a square for wall readings. There's a triangle for ceiling readings. That's probably overly complicated. The most important thing is you have a reading somewhere. So let's, let's mark a reading for this baseboard. That'd be the wall. So put a square in it with an arrow right over here somewhere. In our actual drawing? Yes. Not this box? Yes. Okay. And I don't care if you label it 1, 2, 3, 4 or A, B, C, D, as long as you keep going. So this one let's call square A. You're going to come down to your grid here, put your date in. 
uh, the top. Wait, uh, no, date on the left, sorry. Date below the, and then A in the top. A, right, exactly, yep. So right here, our reading is 100 on day one. Over here on material type, that little square, put A. Put wood, because we're measuring the baseboard. Dry standard. Is wood always going to be zero? Very rarely will it be zero, because wood has a natural moisture content to it. We've got 121 as our dry standard. It's important when you go back, you use the same meter. <laughs> Don't change meters or don't change processes. If you if you had a different, you can stay in the Survey Master family if you're going to use this, but don't grab a Delmhurst and do the same thing. You're going to get a different reading the next day. So let's get a drywall reading. So on this wall, this is 100%. <coughs> so Mark, it's going to need to be another square, and it's going to be square B. Yeah, it's 100. Your dry standard on this for B is 67. Give me a circle right here somewhere. If you're running out of room in that corner, just put an arrow to it. A circle one or a circle C, I don't care which way you do. That's going to be our carpet. It's going to be 100%. We're going to do the same thing in Brian's office. We're going to do the same thing in the warehouse if necessary. We're going to stay in here for the day. These are the points we're going to concentrate on lowering. Our job is to get these points back to the dry standard as quickly as possible. That's our entire goal. Dry standard on the carpet, Well, usually it's zero. It's and if it stays more than three days, we're what are we doing? If it's exactly right, exactly right. Uh, how often do you guys style point here? How often do you guys take out pad versus leave pad? It can be. It can be. But if Bates has some proper, if your extraction guy has some good weighted extraction and, and is able to get some deep suction down in there, you can dry it and leave the pad all day. It's called, it's called top down drying. It's style points. Well, from a re reconstruction and getting people back in their place quicker, it's easier to say, keep it. That's one less trade you got to come back and put in. You can just clean it and go. As opposed to getting a carpet guy back out here, maybe putting this, repairing a seam, putting some pad down, it just adds another day or two to the repair process. So if you if you come into a place and it's completely flat, you know you got whatever three four inches of sandy water on carpet, the place is a mess. You make you call right then if you're going to try to save the pad or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chances are probably not. Probably not. Yeah, but that's why you guys get paid the big bucks. To make those decisions. Make those calls. Just make it, and, and there's no looking back. There's no right or wrong in that point. We're the professionals. We make the call. The adjuster says, why'd you take it out? Well, because it was not going to dry quick enough. It was going to be a hazard, so we took it out. So what's more money? Drying the pad? Let me ask you this. Um, we, there, is a, there is a line item for pad. There is a line item for rolling back carpet for drying. Uh, but if it takes another day to dry because we left the pad in, how much equipment do we have there? We remove the pad, it's going to reduce our drying time, it's going to reduce our rental time. So there's a fine line. We don't want to be goosing it and going, well, we're going to dry it for 10 days because we want to leave the material wet. We're not going to do that. We're going to do what's right. But there's a, there's a trade-off there. If I can save hassle and rebuild time by leaving it, and I get another day of rental of five machines, that's probably going to be a plus for us. Top-down drying is, when I, when I started learning, when I was taught water damage, it was, there was no top-down. It was like, you get it out of there. Because it was, we, were, we all thought the same way as you did, that it's just cheaper to get it out, cheaper and quicker. Well, now with understanding the process a little bit more, it's not as cut and dry. Pardon the pun. We got our moisture map done. Develop our drawing strategy. Okay. Here you go. You're going to need this sheet and your room notes. 
This is where you need a calculator. Label the job name, put the date, put your name on there as technician. Put your rooms on the left hand side. And it sounds like somebody's already done our calculations for us so you know the cubic feet of each room. This is the third place where people's eyes have a tendency to glaze over. Uh, technicians don't like to do this, so they don't. Um, this is also one of the most important things we do. We learned this in water damage class. Who's taking the WRT? Oh, everybody. Okay. Well, except, and you're just here to, to, to fill in for guys when, when these guys don't show up? <laughs> well, there's, there's, there's book learning that you learn in WRT, and then there's real world stuff. You don't need a WRT if you can fill this out. It helps to understand why you're filling it out, but if you don't care why, just fill it out. <laughs> so we've got our we've got our rooms in there. Give me a total cubic foot. Total them up 10, down. Ten thousand one one six point five. Okay. Are we using a desiccant or LGR based drying system? Okay. So follow the black line down to LGR. Well, it's you can see where it says LGR class factor. Put your cubic feet right to the left of that. Yeah, follow the black line. I can make that line thicker or bluer if you want, or orange. <clears throat> class factor. This is where WRT comes in. We, you see the class factors on the lower right. One through four. So there's a, it's either a slow rate of evaporation floors only got wet, a high rate of evaporation, the floors and walls are wet, a fast rate of evaporation, usually floors, walls, and ceilings are all affected, or especially drying situations with specialty considerations. What do you three. think this is? Three. Pat says three. Who else says three? Okay, well. I would say two. <laughs> Why? Why would you say who? Why would you say two? Good point. Style factor. Um, I would agree with you. I also say we're going to demo this. So this ceiling is not going to be wet anymore once we demolish it. It's drying by demolition. So it's not going to be wet when we're done. And maybe there's no insulation up in there and the wood's not wet. So it's in between two and three. Make the call. Make the call on the field and just go with it. Well, let's put three in there and find out. Okay. So three class factor three is 40. So that 40 is your class factor. Do the math. That number divided by 40? Yep. 252.91 pints. That's a lot, because you look up here, and here's your dehumidifier types. Look at a 1,200 will pull out 65 pints a day. An Evolution will pull out 70 pints a day. A 2,000 will pull out 110. M200, you guys don't have those. 7,000, how many, how many pints will a 7,000 pull out a day? I don't have it written down, but 120. So how many 7,000s do I need to pull out? Three. Well, do the math. What's the math work out to? Well, it's 240, but you've got plus that. Write in, write in 7,000. Write in your 7,000. There you go. How many units, you think? You say three? I say three. Put in three and do the math. What do you come up to? 360. So if I do two, I'm at 240, and that's under. Exactly right. Thank you. That's a point I wanted to make, and I'm glad you made that. I'm glad you brought that up. If you are one pint short, Guess what? You get to rent another machine for the day. Because we don't want to be accused of under drying the space. So if we needed 252 pints per day of removal and three machines got us to 250, guess what? We got another machine. We got a fourth machine. So you want to exceed that drying recommendation. So to back to your question about which is more, what if you divide that number by 50 instead of 40? It gets smaller. 
it gets smaller. It re your, your equipment requirements go down. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense. The higher rate of evaporation, the more moisture we've got to take out of the air every day <coughs> so we don't cause secondary damage uh, by humidity going to other places and condensating and doing things like that. So the higher rate of evaporation means we've got to take more water out of the air. We need more machines. That's what the class factor compensates for. So we've got we got to use three machines, right? So, yeah. so, okay. so bring your 360 pints down to the total actual pints. So you bring your 252.91 to the pints. Yeah, bring your 252.91 over here where Pat has done it, all the way to your total. Yeah, right there. Does your does your total here exceed your total here? Yeah. You've done it correctly. Congratulations. Your drying system is set up correctly. You're not going to cause secondary damage. You have just developed your drying strategy. What else are we going to do? What do we do on number 11? Three, three. Number 11? And what does that tip say before you talk to the owner? Discuss with your crew. Talk amongst yourselves. Make sure you're not the only one with this crazy idea how to dry this place. Work it out with each other. Hey, I think this is how we're going to do it. We're going to put some air movers here. We're going to get some dehues, and, and we're, this is what we plan on demo. Does that sound cool with you? Yeah? Yes. Okay, good. Then we go to the owner. Hey, Claudine, this is what we're going to do. We're probably going to end up tearing out most of this drywall. <gasps> no! Not my drywall! I had a guy freak out on me last week. Uh, water damage in the bathroom, tub overflowed for a long time. I walk in there, it's just kind of a small bathroom, and either side of the tub has baseboard, and it's MDF, and it's blown out. It's just poof, <coughs> gone. So I'm going, okay, Cruz, that's gone, that's gone. Suck out some water, blah, blah, blah. The next day, the owner calls me. Why'd you take my baseboard? I said, well, it's, it's ruined. It was, it was gone. It was MDF. It was blown out. He said, well, now I've got to replace it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do. Well, I'm not paying for that. Whoa. It didn't occur to me to get the owner's permission to take his ruined stuff. We've got to pause sometimes, and that's why number 11 is in there. We've got to take inventory and go, you know what? This is not our house. We don't have permission just to run hell mouth through people's houses and destroy stuff. We've got to get their buy-in. Most people are going to say, yes, what? Get the hell out of my house. I don't want it. Some people are going to say, well, no, we'll leave it. And there's a it's a waiver. It's a waiver. She had, she had moldy, wet items, right? It was mold. Mm -hmm. And at the end, she decided not to turn in an insurance claim, and she panicked. Well, we need to help our clients through that process. And you know what? This is shot. One way or the other, this is gone. I need your permission to take this out. And I usually say, as a mitigation crew, don't mess with that stuff. Put it aside. Stabilize it. Get it out of harm's way. But we don't want anything to do with contents here. We don't. Unless Brian tells me otherwise, we don't do contents here. It's just a big old bag of worms that we don't want to open up. So set them aside. Don't make it. Don't make their problem your problem. Put them in the garage. Put them in an unaffected room. Hey, these are. Let them know. Hey, these are wet. You know, place it somewhere until you know the process. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Put them somewhere else. Get them. Put them on plastics so they're not going to get dripping on something else or whatever. And cover them if they're moldy. Get them out of harm's way, and then forget about them. They're not your problem. They're their problem. And that's an area that we can charge for content. Content manipulation. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Every day of the week. All right. So <clears throat> Claudine doesn't have any of these concerns. She wants you to get to work. We get to go to number 12, demolition. What are we doing first? <laughs> Protection. We're making money is what we're doing first. Got some money on this wall. We got some money on this wall. You know what? This car most of this carpet is dry, and we're going to be tracking drywall dust in the air. Guess what? <laughs> Carpet mask, baby. Carpet mask is more expensive than this. So I don't know it offhand, but let me ask you a quick question. We're gonna demo this wall, say four feet over. 
Mm -hmm. And this wall four feet over. Yeah. Can I come five feet over, six feet over, put my plastic there so I'm getting dust on that wall? Is that stretching it? Exactly right. If I'm going to get paid for plastic, that's what I'm going to do. Exactly right. I'll tell you what they won't pay for. It's cleaning that wall. You're not going to get paid for that. There's no, there's no water damage mitigation line item for cleaning a wall. There's a restoration line item for cleaning a wall, but that's in fire and other, other situations. So, so if I dirty it, I'm going to pay for it for free. Exactly right. You're going to do it for free. So let's do something we're going to get paid for instead of making a mess. And have we set any equipment on this job yet? No. no. We're not moving any air, and that's intentional. So we got our plastic up. What do we do next? Oh, hold on. We take pictures of our beautiful plastic. Take pictures of your money, because that's the only way you get paid. All right. If you want to build a containment, yeah, you get paid for that too. It's like a buck twenty-five a square foot. Do make the right call for the situation. Yeah, and I I agree. If it's a kitchen. They don't want to be out of their house. They don't want to be out of their kitchen. They want to use their kitchen. You're going to have to go to extraordinary measures to set up a containment area so you can still do your job and get your drying done. And <clears throat> and they can use their kitchen. Keep in mind, though, if I put a containment up here, what have I done to my drying system? I've just reduced it a whole bunch. I've taken it from three 7,000s to one 1,200 that's going to sit in here and dry this thing out. Not that we need to be looking at, okay, how can I make the most money? You need to be aware of how that affects your drying system. We have reduced the drying system by more than a quarter by putting up a containment here, and that might be the right call. Make the right call and just go with it. Initial that. If there's initial there and there's no pictures, you're lying. We don't like lying. Uh, okay, 13, demo. Follow your drying strategy you came up with. Remove wet materials. Remove wet and non-salvageable materials. Not all wet materials have to come out. You make the call. All right. What am I doing? Ugh, I got to pull this base. It's it's MDF. I know this isn't, but this let's say it is. It's blown out. I've got to pull this base. What's the first thing I do? Cut the caulk. Thank you. Cut your nice line below and behind the drywall, not up to, at an angle. <clears throat> You guys in, that have done this once or twice know what that means. What you don't want, you want to be able to put base back up here without having to repaint this wall. Now, this wall, we're going to demo, so it might be a moot point. But what if this, what, we got to take this base, you can't just hack it right here. we got to take this base all the way around. What if it's got a joint we can't, can't deal with? Or it's cupped or whatever else. So take it as far as you need to. Cut a nice clean line, get that thing out of there. Right. And do we worry about ITEL on water damage? No. 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 I don't want your guys. I don't want you guys worrying about ITEL. Not on the water damage portion. Okay. Repairs, yes. Okay. But that's that's a different function, right. above and beyond the immediacy of what's going on right here. If if you think it's going to be saved or matched in any way, you've got to bring some of that back in your truck. But otherwise, it's cutting a piece of this carpet, you don't want to determine, as, as a mitigation guy, as a water damage crew guy, I don't want to make the call whether this carpet's coming out or not. I'm going to let somebody else... Uh, Try to dry it first. Yeah. And then someone else decide if it's going to stay or not. Yeah. And usually the adjuster likes to make that call anyway. Right. I can't even make that as a project manager. I, I hesitate every time. I'm like, oh, man, is this carpet going to go? Let's leave it up to the adjuster. That way we don't have to fight the fight. And we get paid to dry it. We get paid to dry it. We get, to get paid to suck it out. We get paid to clean it. And then it might be removed anyway. Okay. We made our money first. What's the, what do I do after my demolition? I take my pretty pictures of my work. Admire your work. Be proud in what you did. Nice clean lines. No big mess. And you know what? I'm too close to my subject. I can't. I can't see the overall effect on this room I just had when doing my demolition. So I'm going to come all the way back out here and take another picture so I can prove what I did. Yeah. So that was when when the adjuster tells me yeah. 
we're going to replace this carpet. I need an ITEL sample. I ensure that he has no way to back out of that sucker. I'm taking that sample right here. I'm not going to find some closet where maybe later on he can change his mind. Go, oh, man, let's try to save that carpet. And, yeah. No. Boom. So, I mean, I didn't hesitate. I, it, was like, it was like, oh, yeah, okay. Less than a minute later, it was done. Uh, we made the right call. We left it. The water damage crew didn't make that call because they didn't have to make that call. They left it to somebody else to make that later on. They stabilized the situation. Did it. They cut good seams. They took the pad. The carpet was already gone, but we yeah, did everything. Lucky that the adjuster said, let's just do the whole thing. If the adjuster hadn't done that, if the adjuster hadn't said, hey, well, let's, let's just seam that in and, and make it work, we could still have done that because the, carpet, the water damage crew did their job right. Mm -hmm. Mo yeah, most people right. don't know this. Most people don't realize it, uh, what, you know, what the rules are and how to do things, but there's this thing called the Internet. And they're going to go find the S500 or the S520. And four, year, four years from now, they're going to call up and say, hey, you left sewer crap right here. S500 says you got to replace it. Yeah. We go back to the S500 or the S520. What's it say? Category 2 or Category 3 water in, in porous materials and fabric. It says throw it out. No doubt. Get rid of it. We're never, no one's ever going to hindsight you on why would you take that carpet out Oh, it was sewer. Enough said. Enough said. Okay, we're going back to our room notes. Okay, conference room. What did we do in here? Start from top to bottom. Was water extracted? Yes. Yes, there was. How much do you think? I'm setting you up here, so whatever answer you give is probably going to be wrong, but I'm I'm going to let you be wrong. What? Five gallons. Well, no, so we do our readings. We do the extraction. We had an extractor come in. Yeah, you had a new extractor come in. So you had an extractor guy come in. I mean, I'm a, I, I'm 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 setting you up so I can I can set you straight. I don't care about square footage. Guess what? Half this room was extracted. You get to write one slash two half. Let me figure out. Let the estimator figure out later on how, what that square footage is. Because when you guys start putting down linear footage and square footage, what you usually do is short yourselves. You usually underestimate what you do. And at this point, if I say I extracted half this room, I extracted half this room. Maybe I extracted a little bit less than half the room. Who's going to care to go back and, and call us on it? Water extraction, is, extraction is never done by the gallon. Okay. okay, there's rare, rare, rare exception. In this context, never done by the gallon. It's always by the square foot. So did they have, did they use a wand? Was it weighted? Heavy extraction? Did they make more than one pass? What do you make something up? What did they do? They did weighted because that pays more, right? That's right. Okay. Drywall demolition. Did we do a flood cut? Probably not. We did. Eh. Okay. So how many square feet of drywall did we take out? Well, let me let me show you. About here and here by eight. 428. You're thinking too hard. That's about a quarter of the room. Quarter of the walls. Eighth of the walls. It's a quarter of the room. There you go. Quarter of the walls. One, one slash four W. Quarter of the walls. If we did half the ceiling, it would be one slash two C. Ceiling. Just abbreviate it and keep it short. Keep it short and simple. Insulation. No, there was no insulation. Oh, wait. Do you think there's insulation in this wall since it's a warehouse wall? Probably is, isn't there? Let's estimate, let's estimate uh, one, eighth, one eighth of the walls for insulation. No, you're doing, you're doing great. Uh, and it's, it's awesome that you're here, that you want to learn this. And it, I think, Amy, you as well, that it's important that everyone knows what page we need to be on. So it's, it's great that you guys are taking part in this this morning. Knowledge is umbrella. Flooring removed. Did we remove any flooring? Yes. Did we? No. No, we dried it with heavy extractor. We decided to dry it in place. No. That was a hypothetical. <laughs> no, we did not remove any flooring. Trim. You put no in there, right? You just 
Zero. Zero. Zero or a slash. You want to indicate that you saw the box, but you didn't put anything in it. So don't leave it blank. Put something in there. Zero is fine. Uh, trim. What did we take out? We took out yeah, some base. Out all, all half the room. <clears throat> I would say half the room. Half uh, PC, just so you know. Perimeter of ceiling or perimeter of floor is PF. I usually use PC. So one half PC. So do you put an X? But you can use. Uh, yeah, mark X in the base and then. Half PC. And <laughs> up there, yeah, one half PC. You, you can write in perimeter of floor. You can write in half of the floor. Put it longhand. It doesn't matter. I, it, you don't need to know all the abbreviations right up front. It helps me later on, but it's more important the information gets put down here. Done. Okay. Antimicrobial. Do you guys use that? Yeah. Usually do? You think we're going to use it here? Should we? Are these, uh, are these walls steel studs or wood? Are they going to stay wet more than a couple days? Yes. We should probably think about using it. This is something you put a wag on it. I would say uh, 20 square feet. You know what a wag is? Wild ass guess? Or a swag? Scientific wild ass guess? Wags are good. Wags get us there. <clears throat> cabinets. We didn't have any cabinets in here. If you had... It would, it would, this is where you would put how many you removed by the linear foot. Uppers are different than lowers. And sometimes you take the toe kick, toe, toe kick out to dry underneath the cabinet or a vanity. Sometimes you just drill holes in a toe kick. Those are two different functions. That's why they're here. Uh, you don't get much money for drilling holes. Just FYI. So if you, when in doubt, take the toe kick. Because you can always just slap a new one on. Protection, this is where we make our money. I usually do it by the sheet. Sometimes the sheets come in 25, 25 foot sheets. This is, these come in, this is 120. So how many 120s did we use? <clears throat> One, two, three, we had the table. Four, five. Carpet. Uh, carpet mask is different, so let's go. Protection is five times 120. Let me figure out the math. That's perfect. Plus carpet, all. I like it. Simple. Contents moved. How much did we? How much time did we spend? I usually do it in quarter hours. Half hour, quarter hour, a full hour, and make sure that you know that it's for every dude that's here. So if you've got 15 minutes, let's say we spent 15 minutes moving contents. Well, that's 15 times two, so that's a half hour. Doors removed, we didn't remove any doors. Uh, appliances. Just so you know, we didn't do any appliance manipulation in here. Let's, let's make sure we're still on task. We're back here, number 16. So initial, number 15, set equipment. Bring in your gear. How much gear are you going to need? It says here to wait 10 minutes after all equipment is on. Why do I do that? So I'm not going to blow breakers. Yeah. Yeah, that's very important. The last thing we want is to come back the next day and everything's off and things just dripping wet still. And then what do I do? I prove that we pulled in our equipment. When I'm taking picture of equipment, I'm making sure that I can see the I, number. I want to see the asset number. This here, nice, gorgeous axial. $37 a day, by the way, besides... The regular snails are $25 a day. If you can use one of these, these will function just the same. Use one of these. Get these off the shelf before you get your snails off the shelf. So I'm standing back far enough so I can see where it is, but I can still make out the number. Nine times out of 10, 99 times out of 100, I'm not going to get called on this. But that one time, the adjuster is going to say, you didn't have that equipment there. Oh, well, yeah, I did. Here it is. Here's a picture with a date, the equipment number. Well, you just moved that fan from one room to the other. No, I didn't. This fan has one number. This fan has a different number. This is all CYA. We go back to room notes. The equipment is done by room. 
So DH is dehumidifier, AM is air mover, NA is negative air machine, DES is desiccant, WD is wall drying unit, FD is a floor drying unit, hardwood floor unit. Do you guys have any injected dryers or hardwood floor? No. You should probably think about that. It's a good piece of equipment to have. You can charge a lot for those. And you can potentially save a lot of material. But injected dry? If I can, if I can blow air into this wall without demoing this wall, Let's say it has a mural on it. I, this is a true story. I had a mural, a multi-thousand dollar mural, and it was wet top to bottom. Well, we were able to, to get enough air in the top, enough air in the bottom with injected dries, we were able to save that. So this is AM5001, and it was set today. And we also have, oh, you have it marked D007. Is that what that says? Perfect. So what are we going to have in here? We're going to have this, we're going to have this, but this wall is wet in two different places. Um, we're probably going to have another... We already know. We, we already have three, three, three set of three of them. Not in here, in the whole system. So one, right. If you had all that equipment in this room, oh, okay. what would happen if you had all that equipment running in this room? Besides getting really, really super hot. It'd dry really fast. You'd blow out that trim. That trim would suck in. You'd lose all your yeah. joints because it sucked the, the, the normal amount of moisture out of that wood, and then you'd be re-trimming this place, causing secondary damage. You can do damage by drying too quickly. So you would spread that gear out. You'd put a dehue in there, you put a dehue in there, and you put a dehue in here. Still following our, our strategy and, and our calculations, but we'd spread it out. And you wouldn't be having power issues in this room. Uh, so in here, in, in Brian's office, what do we got in there? We got an air mover and we got a DU. Make up a number. Put in the date. You will notice that there is a complete lack of follow-up items on here. That's intentional. Do all the demo the first day. We don't, we don't want to come back three days from now and do additional demolition. Final atmospherics. What am I doing with my final atmospherics? What do we have? Go to your RDC and what what spot is not Filled out. Oh. The DU reading, yes. This tells me, more importantly, it tells the insurance company my equipment is functioning properly. The problem I've run into before is where these are only accurate to plus or minus 4%. And my reading over here and my reading here, if I do the math, it shows that I'm adding moisture to the air for some reason. I know intuitively I'm not because the machine is running and operating properly. But with the margin of error in these, when you get down to less than three GPP difference, insurance companies, especially farmers, will say, I'm not renting this machine to you because you're not actually reducing the moisture in the air. Uh, the reason I bring that up is because when you take this reading, keep in mind that you want, to, you want this to be as low as possible. Do you, you need pictures of those when you, when you take that? You don't have to go that no, way. don't take pictures. If you want to document things like stud walls that are wet, I've done that. You take out, take out your invasive, stick it in there, beep, and you just take a picture of it. Okay. You don't need that. I've never been asked for a picture of my moisture reading. Nineteen. Yeah, you initialed your RDC number eighteen, nineteen. Review all the paperwork. Yeah, they shut them off. And, and that is what it is. We're, we're dealing with people's houses and their, and their living spaces. And if they need to be comfortable at night and turn off the machine, so be it. We'll come back in. We'll turn them back on. If you've got to add more equipment to compensate for that, that's a specialty drying situation. We'll add more equipment. Delay the drying time. It's going to delay the drying time. So we'll know that day, too. It's not drying. You're going to bring your room notes back and say, hey, equipment was off. We're on our daily report. Equipment was off. Day day three, day two and a half, we're not seeing you know this trend. We got to reevaluate. We got to change our drying strategy. That's okay. It's fair. It's a game. We 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 adjust to the game game conditions. I want everyone to be thinking. Okay. Sure, absolutely. It's a good point, and and it's it's about situational awareness. The situation is going to change day to day. You're going to come in. This is not going to be the same room that you left yesterday. And so you take your readings again. That's why we have our RDC. We take our readings again. We make sure our equipment's still functioning. We take our moisture points again and we track it. If we've got to add double the equipment to get this thing dry, 
Well, guess what? That's what we got to do. As far as the insurance company goes, that's their problem. That's the owner and the insurance company. We're doing our job the best of our ability, and we're not taking other people's problems and making our own. So review the paperwork. Uh, go through your room notes one more time. Go through your RDC one more time. Make sure there's no blanks in there that, that would cause you pause. And then go back to the owner. Hey, done. We're leaving for the day. When, would you, when can we come back? We'd like to come back sometime tomorrow. What works for you? Put a time there. That time comes back, it goes to Claudine or whoever does the scheduling. <coughs> so it may not be you. It, it may be somebody else that goes back. You've got to follow up every day. And the very last thing, in time. So what time is it right now? 7.47 a.m.? I overshot a little bit. Sorry, Pat. And would it be best? And that's 